Hey guys, uh, welcome to learning how to use TortoiseKit and to implement that onto your computer and use it for uh, connecting with GitHub. So, first things first, uh, you're going to open up Chrome and we're just going to do the bare minimum by downloading Git. So you just go to search Git downloads, and then it should be you should find yourself on this website. Uh, I'm using Windows 10, so that's what I'm going to do this example for. And uh, like my downloads already starting. If I look in downloads, I already have it in here. It's a version behind, but you know who cares? It does the same purpose. Um, so I'm just I'm not going to bother wasting your times with downloads because I already have it. So uh, what I'm going to do now then? open up downloads and here we have git awesome uh, we have we'll just read through terms and conditions ideally you'd read them but you know let's be honest who does uh, we'll click next and we can leave all these settings as they are um, if you know what you're doing and you want to change them you know I who might like no skin off my nose I don't really care do what you do uh, and then default editor. So we're not going to actually be using the terminal or any editor to operate Git. That's what that's what uh, like that's why we have Tortoise Git. That's why I'm doing this video. Um, so like, if you really care though about Git's default editor, you know they have the options. You have Nano and Vim, which are uh, command prompt editors. And I don't know if actually they're for Linux exclusive, but we did download the Windows thing, so I'm assuming they're on the Windows terminal as well. Oh, wrong thing. Sorry. Uh, and then Notepad++ is awesome. Visual Studio Code, I think that's just for C++ stuff, or C stuff, but again, I'm not so sure. If you really care, you'll be changing it. It doesn't matter for the purposes of this video. Click Next, and uh, I'll just leave everything as default. Now it doesn't really matter because we're going to be using um, our tortoise git. Sorry, I just forgot the name for a bit. Uh, so you'd click install, but I don't need to install it because I already have it. So you know, you'd click install and finish when it's done. Ex when exit set up to stop wasting your time. So we'll do uh, tortoise git now. Tortoise git downloads, and it should be the first thing you want to find yourself on this website. And you're going to download for whatever version of Windows you have. If you have 32 bit, download that. 64, download that. If you don't know how to check, uh, you'll open up your control panel, go to System. And then under this System section, you're going to look for System Type. And then you'll see X bit operating system. I have 64 bit. That's when we want to download. So I'd click Download. I mean, I already have it in my downloads, so, you know. Uh, I'm not going to worry about downloading it, so I'll just you know cancel that, open up downloads, and then find tortoise git. Um, so yeah, all right, we'll do you know warranty stuff. Uh, all these settings, it doesn't. I just I don't touch that. I don't really want to mess up this installer because it works for the default. Um, oh, and you know, if you don't like where it's downloading or when it where it installs to, feel free to change it. I don't care. And then it's as easy as clicking install there. Uh, there's not really much like there's not as much stuff that we had to do for the Git, or not as much stuff that we had to ignore uh, as we did for the Git. So I already have it installed, so I'm just going to cancel this installation. And wonderful, now both of those are on your computer. So next, you're going to go to GitHub. And I'm just going to go to my GitHub to show you this. Uh, so what we're going to do now, you go to repositories, add new. Um, actually, no, I don't want to add new. I want to wait. I want, uh, so I'm making this for people that, uh, actually this current, this current one will be for people that have like some Java, or actually it doesn't matter what kind of project, just some programming project on their computer. So test repo workspace. And then I'm going to open up Eclipse. 
if you don't know how to install Eclipse, uh, I did make a video about that. Uh, it's in my um, Java tutorial series. I think it's one of the first few videos there. Uh, I don't actually have enough videos to pop like to completely populate my my channel's video page, so you know it should definitely be visible on that. And then we're going to want to uh, look for our workspace. So this is assuming that you already have everything all set up in Eclipse. Um, I'm just going to populate this folder quickly, uh, just to just for demonstration purposes. Again, this is for the people that already have this stuff set up. All right, so I'm just going to open up a new. I'm just going to make a new job project and call it. Uh, I'll just call it test. I don't really care. Um, and then you know, I'll do package uh, test. Um, package, whatever. All right. So I can exit out of that because I just have I just wanted to make my project set up. And now I'm going to do git create repository here. So actually before I continue, I want to point out that Tortoise git already made itself comfortable in my folder modification uh, table here. You know, it already has its tortoise git settings and all uh, git clone, git create, and then git did as well. So you have like git GUI, git bash. Um, I'm going to right click on a project that already has all of that set up. So it already has, it's already connected with GitHub, and you can see that the settings are different, and there's a uh, significant uh, amount of tortoise git settings here, and you know, those stay the same. So I'm going to get create, and you do want to leave this unchecked because we're doing stuff within it. Uh, so, awesome. So, an important distinction between my two folders in here, or two main folders, is that I have my workspace folder and I have my project folder. The workspace folder is going to house the project, whatever Eclipse needs, or if you use something else, uh, if you use a different compiler or editor, if there's anything else that needs, it's going to be in the workspace folder, most likely. Um, I can't speak for everything, but I'm pretty sure that's a general rule. And it's going to ha house the git folder. So this is a hidden folder. Um, and uh, I can't remember how to do the hidden uh, uh make hidden folders visible for people that have been able to do this. So I'll be right back. All right. So uh, for those that don't know how to enable hidden folders, you're going to want to go to View, Options, Change Folder and Search, View again, and then you'll see this Hidden Files and Folders, Show, Hidden Files, Folders and Drives. Click OK, and, uh, OK, <laughs> excuse me, and Apply, and you should be able to see this Git folder. So to recap, your workspace folder should have the Git folder and the test folder and anything else that a compiler might need if it puts things there. But these two are what you need. Those are the most critical. Your uh, project folder should just have only things that apply directly within the project. So everything in here should be what you see when you open up Eclipse or uh, whatever editor or compiler you use. So now that we have it on here, now that we actually have this uh, with Git, we need to be able to connect it. Um, so, whoops. Uh, what we're going to need to do then is settings, uh, yeah, remote, and then we're going to call this origin, and now we'll go to new uh, I think we did test repo for the last one. Let me just check the project name. Uh, we just did test. All right, so I will rename that test. So the repository and project names, I believe, need to match. Um, can't do anything there. Do not initialize with a readme right now. 
Uh, and we're importing an existing, so we can just click create. Uh, and then what we want to do is copy this, paste it into our remote and origin, add save. Do you want to fetch? Yes, just to you know sync everything up. Uh, since we just created it, nothing should change. Oh, awesome success. Wonderful. Now we can exit that out, and if we go ahead and open up Eclipse again, we launch our workspace. And eventually it will open up for us. Oh, there we go. And we make an edit. Uh, let's just do system.out.println. There we go. Um, let's be an advertiser for tor tortoise git here. Tortoise git is awesome. Yay. Wonderful. We have our change. We can exit out. Then we'll do git commit master. So you always have to have a message with git, with tortoise git. So actually, this is the tortoise git interface. <laughs> um, and we want to have a, a message. So we'll do initial commit. That's always what you do first. Uh, that's what I always do first, I mean. And the only things we need to worry about are these three files. We only need to worry about those for now. If you have anything else, um, or actually general rule, put everything in Git in GitHub. If it uh, if it's your project, if it's a project file like the like these three, or if it's not, a, 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 and if it's not like one of these just general, you know, all the metadata dot recommenders. That's you don't you don't need that in Eclipse. You just need. Or not, I'm sorry, not Eclipse, GitHub. You just need your, you know, your class, pla class path and project files because if you're going to be sh uh, sharing this GitHub repository with multiple people, they aren't going to need those uh, in order to actually open those up in Eclipse or um, if you don't have, if you're not using Eclipse, um, look for some equivalent of these. If they don't have them, then, you know, don't worry about it. Uh, for Eclipse and Java, you know, you don't don't need to worry about class, don't need to worry about prefs. Just look for things that are .java, and then the .project .class path. So we'll do initial commit, commit and push. So we're going to be wanting to do that uh, local. The local branch is just master. Um, I think later I might do a a video explaining a little more about this stuff because there's still definitely more I need to learn personally. Um, so yeah, I'll probably do a video of that later. And then you want to do that remote origin. So the origin is the one we set up. The, that's the one that actually connects our computer to uh, GitHub. And you don't need to worry about any of these options. You know, just leave those as is. We'll click OK. and success. Uh, so generally when you start to see these things happen, when it starts to print out those, actually when it starts to print out that, uh, it's, I usually, that that usually tells me it's a, uh, a success. So this was a success, which is great because it's the initial commit, it shouldn't fail. And then if we go back to the test repository, we see, awesome, we see test, we see the stuff that we uh, decided to commit, and there's our code. Awesome. All right, so now for the people that want to just copy or clone a repository from GitHub. Um, I will also include at the end of this section uh, a part where, like the, the time where I kind of want to bring everyone back together uh, to cover some finishing uh, important topics, uh, but for now, this is the second section, cloning or downloading. So this button here is going to be your best friend. You want to click it, you want to copy, 
and then what you want to do is get clone I'm just doing this right on the desktop because it makes life really easy uh, then that's the directory it's going to create it clones and we have test so test is our uh, workspace folder I'm going to actually rename this though to test workspace because otherwise it's really confusing because if I have two, if I have the workspace folder named test and then my project is test, you know, that messes with the, uh, that messes with things a bit. Uh, so now to integrate this into Eclipse, uh, actually I can just do test workspace because when you get it from GitHub, uh, Eclipse doesn't actually know that you know test workspace has an Eclipse project in it. Uh, so you have to tell Eclipse that it that it's, uh, it's a real thing that you want to access. And to do so you're going to go file, import, uh, general, existing project, and then you're going to want to click that root, the root directory is going to be your your workspace that you imported. So test workspace. And then it recognizes that project that we imported from GitHub. So we're going to click finish because it's highlighted and there we go it is truly as easy as that alright so this is where I want to bring everyone back together uh, because there are some important things about changing now the workspace that we have or cha I mean changing the repository that we have so what I have here is Eclipse with um, with our project and uh, before I do anything though, I want to say that so for the people in the first section uh, test repo workspace is the same as test workspace uh, text work workspace is what I created in the second section and uh, for people in the second, second, sec second section oh my god I can't speak uh, this is what I did in the first one uh, but they're the same they have the same code I did it I copied from the same repository uh, so now I'm in Eclipse, and uh, right next to test I have this arrow, and that means that this is that this project is currently being changed because you know I'm in Eclipse, I'm changing it, and then these yellow little uh, cylindrical things, that means that uh, this is known by GitHub. This is in GitHub. If I were to create a new class, uh, I'll just call it, you know, I'll just call it class. It has a little question mark because GitHub doesn't recognize it, or Tortoise Git or Git itself doesn't actually recognize this. Um, when I say GitHub, I just I mean Tortoise Git and Git. They don't recognize this because I've never actually committed. And commit when you commit something, that's that's really just uh, set like you're saying, okay, this is my change, and then when you push. That means that you're 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 really just pushing this information to that server, to the GitHub server. Um, after this change, I'll I'll actually explain that uh, a little better because I don't think I did before, and I apologize for that. So now we're gonna make a change. Uh, I'll just be another spokesperson for Tortoise Git. I'm not very creative. I'm sorry. And you'll notice when I saved this, there are now that the little carrot next to the source folder, test package, and test class .java. That means that these have been edited. As I said before, you know, test is being changed right now. So this means also that they have been changed. Um, and that means that what I have here is not up to date with what I have here. So we're going to fix that. We're going to exit out of Eclipse. And um, I believe I was working in this one. Yeah, okay. So it doesn't matter. Well, actually, it does matter which one I use, but because of the same, and they go to the same place, I can just say, all right, test workspace. I want to commit you to the master, and I want to say changed print statement. Um, so after that initial commit, your message should describe what you've done. Right? So what I did, I have a modified file, test class.java, 